The coffee is going over so well. Everybody loves Kiva Han coffee. I appreciate you, but I, I hear you went to Peru to get, get my latest batch, huh? Went, went to Peru. We, uh, I mean, it was, you know, seven hour flight, three hour flight north in Peru, and then 17 hours in the car to Copenhagen. I am so boring. Are you kidding? You're not boring. Well, by TV standards, I am. I mean, I'm supposed to have a more interesting life, something that would, would compel the Perks audience to watch. Well, I definitely have an interesting life. My mom won't get off my back. She keeps telling me I need to either get married or get a job. She says I'm too busy partying. Mm. I'm young, that's what young people do. Mm. Guess we have both problems, don't we? Yeah, well, I wish there was a way we can help each other out. Hmm. Hmm. Nobody appreciates the delivery guy. No sorry. Especially my wife and my daughter. You know what I mean? They don't care about all the sacrifices that I made throughout the years. You know what I mean? Sure, I would love to go to Hawaii, but I got responsibilities. I got to worry about my business, about my customers, and my, and my uh, most of all, my family. You know what I mean? It isn't like I can just pick up and leave like everybody else. What was that about? Everybody's saying Joe's wife left him and went to Hawaii. Wow. Petey. Welcome to the feedback portion of the program, and that's where we get to talk back to you. You send us emails, you send us comments on the, on the uh, web through our hisplace.tv website, and we get to respond to you. And Susan wrote, she's responding about Ron Moore's great book, it says, God has a plan and a purpose for us. He gets our attention by any means that will work. Once God gets our attention, Ron Moore's book, Ignite, can show us how to ignite a passion for Christ and break the chains that hold us captive to the the freedom that is ours in Christ. I want that passion. That's what we love to do with the program, is get people fired up and excited about their walk with Christ. So if you want to leave a comment or you're curious about the program and have a question, go to hisplace.tv and leave your comment or your question. Just small coffee, please. Wait, small coffee? You always get the caramel mocha lead and I get the mocha lot and a muffin and are, are you cutting back? You have heart problems? Uh, nothing like that. I am cutting back though because there are some things that I want to do. Oh, you mean like uh, buy a new car or a big vacation? No, nothing like that. See, I've started 20 for 20. It's this way that I can reach out around the world through my neighborhood and literally around the world. It's Cornerstone Television's new outreach program where 20 for 20 stands for $20 a month for 20 minutes. Basically, for $20 a month, if I skip a few muffins and a few scones every month, then what I can do is support 20 minutes of Cornerstone Television's broadcast day. Well, no, they broadcast in my neighborhood, around the country, and uh, around the world, right? Yeah. Well, my $20 is bringing the gospel to my neighborhood, as well as around the world, but it's doing more than that. I'm feeding and clothing orphans. I'm also seeing families restored. And you know what? The other night, somebody called, and they were at the end of their rope. Somebody prayed for them. Their life was changed. I like to believe that that was my 20 minutes. That's worth skipping a few muffins a month. He is so lucky. That is an awful thing to say. Okay, sorry dude, that totally didn't come out right. No, I'm not happy because like his wife left him and went to Hawaii, but Joe has what I need. A truck? No, no, pay attention. He has a story. The Perks viewers are gonna love his storyline, don't you see? I don't think they're gonna like that. Okay, Joe works hard and he might be a little, I don't know, eccentric, but he's a good guy and what happened to him is sad. Yes, exactly. The viewers are gonna love that. They're gonna eat that up. You know, see, they're gonna see this good guy. He's living a good life and something bad happens to him. They're gonna give him sympathy and empathy. I need sympathy and empathy. I need to get something very interesting, but nothing's happening right now. No, no, this is terrible. I need something that's gonna help me to stand out, especially being the star of the show and all, you know what I mean? It's not like I'm that interesting either. It's not like I have anything that I want people to know. 
people aren't going to want to hear about my mom saying how I need to get married or have a job for a meaningful life. That's pretty boring. Well, look, so we both have problems, okay? So I'm thinking if we really put our minds together and think hard, we can figure out a way to help each other out. Maybe. Mm. How can we do that? Hmm. These boxes get heavier and heavier every year, but nobody cares. You know what I'm saying? Nobody cares about their boxes or anything. All they're worried about is going to Hawaii. Joe, I just want to tell you that I'm really sorry that your wife left you and went to Hawaii. Yeah, she did leave me alone, but at least I still have a life. Like, uh, you could really use one. We're trying to find something. Yeah, we don't know how. Huh. I want to know why everybody thinks the delivery guy has all the answers. Huh. Hmm. Biddy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to uh, uh, tell everybody that we're so pleased to have back with us Brian Cole. So let's give it up for him as he does the man I used to be, right? Turned out to be. Turned out to be. There we go. Brian. I never cussed my brother Had more time with my mother What would I do if my dad was still alive? Right now we'd be out fishing And when he talked I'd finally listen Finding out that he was always right I said some things I wish I hadn't If I could, I'd take it back There's a lot of things I wish that I could change Every time I put my hand in the fire I pull it out a little wiser Ain't done nothing yet that's keeping me from living with the man that I turned out to be. Oh, yeah. I guess some of the things I did were all a part of being a kid. And I was wrong long enough to get it right. Lord, I wish that I had told her. How much I really loved her Maybe she'd be here with me tonight I said some things I wish I hadn't If I could, I'd take it back There's a lot of things I wish that I could change Every time I put my hand in the fire it out a little wiser Ain't done nothing yet that's keeping me From living with the man that I turned out to be It's an endless fight to keep it real Giving time the wounds will heal It's what you learn between the scars That lets you find out who you are I said some things I wish I hadn't If I could, I'd take it back There's a lot of things I wish that I could change Every time I put my hand in the fire I pull it out a little wiser Ain't done nothing yet that's keeping me from living with the man that I turned out to be Oh, yeah, 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 yeah Oh, yeah, I turned out to be, yeah Oh, yeah Thank you so much You know, you really got me confused. You got a great business going here, the, the roaster and, and all the distribution that you're doing, but you, you pack up. I, I mean, I know that guys go and they buy coffee at different places and, and you look for that, but 
when I was talking to your office, you're going down to Peru. It was more than just buying coffee. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, you know, what, what you deal with when you're, when you're talking about coffee, you've got 25 million small family farms that uh, it's the largest employer in the third world. And they're oftentimes being taken advantage of. So how do you change the equation? And for me as a roaster and somebody that's selling coffee, you know, how can you really affect the lives of these people? And as a Christian, um, you know, how can I make a difference? You know, so often when you have a business, it's, it's you know, it's about making money. You've got to make a profit to, to pay your employees, to, to continue operating the business. But I can also make a difference in the way I buy the coffee and where I go to get the coffee. And this coffee from this town in Peru, actually, um, we bought the coffee from 30 farmers. And these farmers sold it to us directly. We actually brought... Um, so you went there, you we met these there. farmers. This isn't right. just some, some corporate kind no. of stuff where no. you're saying, you know, some big corporate thing. This is you going right. up in the jungle Right. buying this right. stuff. And literally, this is in the jungle. The last five and a half hours of the trip are on a dirt road that winds up the mountain, um, and you're going across bridges that are, I mean, they're logs. They're just logs with your two tires going across, and if you drop off these logs, you're down 30 feet. And um, so you have to trust in God that you're doing the right thing here, and uh, it's going to make a difference. So, and in this village... You know, you're talking dirt roads. Most of the homes have dirt floors in the houses. Um, and so these people, you know, you know, what are you guys coming here for? And they don't have any well, checking I'm sure they've accounts. been ripped off before. Oh, right? they I'm have. Sure. And, and the gatherer, the person that typically buys their coffee in this village, has always taken advantage of them. So the, the one thing we brought with us was a scale. So that we actually had a scale that was accurate. So we bought a scale before we went up there. Uh, paid a thousand dollars for this down in Peru, um, and because the scale that that the gatherer had been using to weigh their coffee was off ten to twenty percent, so he was always cheating them ten to twenty percent, and then he makes loans to them for for uh, organic fertilizer, and he'll charge them fifty four percent interest. So we're also making micro loans to these farmers, and the first loan was for their first round of fertilizer in the beginning of August and we're charging them 6% interest. Um, so you're, you're not just about buying coffee. You're, you're changing a whole village. Oh, you're, yeah. you're, you're stopping right. them at the very minimum. They're not getting ripped off anymore. Exactly. They're, they're selling their, their coffee uh, at a fair price. Right. And, and uh, you're, you're helping them in, in the villages to really change their world. Exactly. We paid them the highest price they ever received for this coffee. Um, Just small coffee, please. Wait, small coffee? You always get the caramel mocha lid and I get the mocha lot and a muffin and a... Are you cutting back? You have heart problems? Uh, nothing like that. I am cutting back, though, because there are some things that I want to do. Oh, you mean like uh, buy a new car or a big vacation? No, nothing like that. See, I've started 20 for 20. It's this way that I can reach out around the world through my neighborhood and literally around the world. It's Cornerstone Television's new outreach program where 20 for 20 stands for $20 a month for 20 minutes. Basically, for $20 a month, if I skip a few muffins and a few scones every month, then what I can do is support 20 minutes of Cornerstone Television's broadcast day. Well, no, they broadcast in my neighborhood, around the country, and uh, around the world, right? Yeah. Well, my $20 is bringing the gospel to my neighborhood, as well as around the world, but it's doing more than that. I'm feeding and clothing orphans. I'm also seeing families restored. And you know what? The other night, somebody called, and they were at the end of their rope. Somebody prayed for them. Their life was changed. I'd like to believe that that was my 20 minutes. That's worth skipping a few muffins a month. Do you know that your morning cup of coffee can help clothe, feed, rescue, and care for the poorest of the poor? I know it may seem hard to believe, but it can happen. His Place and Kiva Han Coffee have joined forces to bring a special blend of coffee that will change the world. Hope Coffee is a direct trade coffee, which means that the families of the people who work hard on the coffee farms receive the funds directly from their harvest. In addition, the profits from Hope Coffee go to help rescue children in impoverished countries and bring the message of God's love to people all around the world. For a limited time, for your gift of $37, 
we'll send you as our thank you a His Place mug and a 12-ounce bag of Hope Coffee. Together, we're changing the world one life at a time through one cup of coffee at a time. Send your gift today. So, how is it going around here, guys? Well, Sam's mom thinks she needs to get a life, get a job, or get married. Hey! Whoa! Come on now. This is interesting. This is interesting. Sam, tell us what's going on. Well, my mom is old school. She's worried because at my age, she was already married and had a kid, me. And she thinks I don't want that. You know, maybe I want a career, maybe I don't. I don't know yet. Yeah, Sam's mom also thinks she parties too much. Oh, hey! Ah! Well, listen, listen, I think your mom has a very valid point, all right? I, I mean, most people understand that settling down, developing long-term relationships, some of the most important things we do in our lives. Oh. How would you know anything about that, Dirk? Huh. I heard the rumors. What rumors did you hear, Joe? Well, the producers are like sailors, you know, they got a girl in every port. <laughs> well, shiver me timbers there, Joe, but it just ain't true. <laughs> uh, look, the line of work that I'm in doesn't lend itself to families or even developing meaningful relationships. And since we're all being honest with each other, there's a lot of times that I wish that could be different. So what about you, Joe? How are you and your wife doing? My wife did not leave with another delivery guy. I heard she left you and went to Hawaii. Huh? Well, my job isn't really a glamorous job. I mean, even though everybody thinks it's a glamorous job, it isn't like I can just pick up and leave, you know, and go to Hawaii, you know? I wonder how many ports are in Hawaii. So is, is this the kind of coffee we're going to be getting here yes. with this new roasting? Yes, you'll be using the Peruvian coffee at this point. Well, cool, cool. Well, well, and why, why this? I mean, there's, there's so many villages. You said there's, you know, there's thousands of villages around the world that you could that are growing coffee. Why this one? Um, well, what happened with this village is we had a friend of ours that had introduced us to, the, to this community. And we literally, we could have gone to any village. But um, this minister that was a friend of ours had told us about these farmers and how they had been taken advantage of and how they were looking for somebody to buy their coffee direct. And um, so that's, that's why this village. I mean, this village, I mean, it's, you know, they very rarely get visitors up in this village like us, somebody from North America coming down there to do this. And so they, they treated us like royalty. I mean, they were amazing. And... So, well, what's it like there? I mean, what, what are the are the kids all healthy? Is there is there good hygiene? Is there good water? I mean, what what what's it like? Um, in there? I mean, because we when you say village, you know, most people in America are thinking, well, I'll, I'll go to you know uh, Cranberry or or Elizabeth or right. McKeesport or it's, or Cleveland. You know, we're right when 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 you're talking a village in Peru. Um, uh, most Americans could, like you're saying, can't relate. I mean, this village, the, I mean, they're incredible people. They're very happy, very religious, um, absolutely incredible. But the number one medical issue in this village is childhood malnutrition. And so these people, you know, you go into this village, it sits at 7,200 feet up in, what, in an area with, that they call the Amazon Andes. And it's beautiful. You look out, there's monkeys down in the valley, there's parrots, butterflies like you can't believe. Absolutely incredible. They don't enjoy that though. They're working all the time to produce cash crops that they can sell to so us. So kids can eat. So their, their kids can eat. And their, their number one protein source is guinea pigs which is very traditional in the Andes. Um, but it's, it's a difficult life. I mean, it really is. So us going down there changes the equation. We as Americans, as the largest users of coffee, if we can, if we can create a model as a roaster that other roasters can follow and do the same thing in other villages, because it can be done, and so many people are afraid to do this directly. And... Um, we, we actually took our money with us because these people don't have bank accounts. So we carried $100,000 down there, went into this village, and paid the farmers individually. Um, so, I mean, it, there's risks, but it's well worth it in, in the but things But this is about we making do. a difference with this village oh, and these people. Right, exactly. It's, um, and it's, it's, for us, you can see that we're making a difference already. Um, when we left there, I mean, the village has no telephone service, no internet service, things that we take for granted. And um, these farmers were very excited. 
That's cool. That's cool. I mean, it's good that you can take one. <sighs> so, why don't you just have a seat? Thanks. Yeah, I think I heard something about how you don't have a life. Okay, well, that's what my mom thinks, okay? <laughs> she says that I need to either get married or get a job. You know, I'm young and I just want to live a little. Why rush? Well, I kind of, like, see her point that maybe goals are helpful. However, I am 100% for being young and having fun. Well, I mean, that's what I'm doing. I, I guess... I don't have any goals yet. I'm kind of looking for some. Well, you have to think about what do you do in your normal life that could maybe lead you in a direction. All you need is a direction, and then you can tell people, yes, I'm headed in this direction. I could make a show on shopping. I shop a lot with my friends, and I have Dirk, and he could help me start up a television show. Okay, there you go. So you've got all the answers. You've got your television show. You've got shopping, which could become a employment opportunity. See, but my mom hates show business. Oh. She, like, I told her about this stuff that I was doing here with Dirk, and she wasn't too happy about it. So what's she thinking? She's thinking school, or she's thinking family? She wants me to get married. I'm, you know, I'm in school now, but I still don't know what to do. Like, there's just so many options out there. I'm just, I don't know. I'm not ready to, like, pick one thing and say, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my yeah. life. There's really only one time in your life where you can do whatever you want, and that is now. That is right when you're either in college or right out of college. I always tell people I think you should move to the beach as soon as possible and spend as much time as you can in the sun. Man, what are you, what are you doing here? I thought you and Mr. Wally were going to the mall. We did. He's parking the car. We thought we'd grab a little something. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you see you. Uh, honey. Huh? Ha have I been forgetting things? Forgetting things? No! You don't think I tell the same story too often or, or that I forget that I've told you things? Graham, what is this about? I Nothing. I'm going to go sit down. I I'm tired. We walked a lot today. Hey, Lottie, there's a table over there. Mm -hmm. I'll be right there. What have you been telling my grandmother? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play with me. You've been telling her that she's been getting for thing, forgetting things and she's fine. Now, listen, you need to leave her alone and don't have her worrying. Son, I wouldn't want her to worry and I wouldn't do anything to hurt her. But I would be lying if I told you I wasn't worried about her. Just stop it. I don't need you to worry about her. If anybody's going to worry about her, it'd be me. Now, now, now go sit down, and I might bring you some fresh coffee. <sighs> Madeline, old man, I'm telling you. Goodness. So do your, uh, your parents ever come around here? Why? Oh, I'd just love to get them on the show. <laughs> My mom would never go for that. She's not too thrilled that I'm doing this whole thing. She hates anything that has to do with show business. Mm. She says it's a whole other world and people get wrapped up in it and ruin their lives. So what about your dad? <laughs> my dad would never admit it to my mom, but he thinks what I'm doing is great. He even wants to stop in and kind of check out and see what goes on behind the scenes. Well, I would love to meet him sometime. Thanks, hey, but I don't think he'll want to be taped. No, I can certainly understand that. <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the Pittsburgh Pirates have a brand new theme song and guess who it's by? It's by our very own Brian Cole and he's about to perform that song for us. It's called The Pride and the Passion. Give it up for Brian. Woo. All right, you want to sing with me now? All right, here we go. Ready? Here we go. Hey, 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 hey. Come on. Here you go. Hey, 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 hey. Well, I want to take you down where the rivers run, down to my home in the city. Working like a dog, do we have some fun? If you wanna go sing with me, hey, 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 you got it. Well, I'm proud to be a patriot of my hometown, loving every dang thing about it. Baseball, apple pie, country sound. If you love it too, then shout it. Hey, 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 hey. Folks, when we get together, everybody wants to play. Let's get this whole thing started. We can shout out night and day, singing, hey, what you want to say? Oh, it's pride and the passion that'll take us all the way. Hey, 
What you gonna do? Oh, it's pride and a passion. It's the red, white, and the blue. We've talked the talk, now let's kick a little action. It's a pride and the passion. All right, y'all sing along. Here we go. Oh, now, hey, 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 there you go. Well, I'm born to be a brother of a neighborhood. Don't you know we always bring it? Celebrate life, cause you know it's good. If you love it too, then shout it. Hey, 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 there you go. Cause when we come to party, everybody wants to play. Let's get this whole thing started. We can shout out night and day, singing, hey, what you want to say? Well, with the pride and the passion, it'll take us out the way. Hey, what you gonna do? Well, with the pride and the passion, it's a red, white, and the blue. We talk the talk, now let's kick a little action. It's the pride and the passion. All right, finish it up for me. Here we go now. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Come on. Oh, pride and the passion. Oh, here we go. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. You're talking about passion. I, I, I tell you, I, this, this has changed you. Oh, totally. I mean, we're going to do this. The goal is to do this in 10 countries, 10 different villages. And so we're talking about going to Tanzania next. And we'll be back in Peru next year, and hopefully we'll buy triple the amount of coffee from this village. I mean, we're, we're actually teaching them how to grow the coffee better, to do things that improve the quality of the coffee. And um, it's exciting. You're going to change the world one village at a time, huh? That's ex that's exactly what we want to do. I mean, and do that in 10 villages. Yeah, it's great stuff. It's yeah, good. It's it's very cool. It's very cool. It, it's what one person can do. I mean, you're one person. Yeah, yeah the lights are on. The door is open. The coffee's strong. Nothing quite like watching our assistant floor producer there, John Matarazzo, dancing to our theme song behind the cameras. We'll have to, we'll have to get that and put that up online for you. Hey, uh, if you want to find out more about uh, Ed or Kiva Han, I tell you what, they're changing the world, and, and we're glad to be part of it. Uh, you want to tune into the next His Place when you can hear more of Brian Cole's great music. He's going to be back with us. You can always go to hisplace.tv, find out more about him. And Sam and Marcus are dating? What's up with that?